All right. <clears throat> Going to give it a few minutes. This is, I know, a late night live stream, but I found out about the monitor in Merrimack and just had to get a video up. So we're going to go live here and uh, just give folks a few minutes, whoever might be awake at the moment, to do this. So if you're here and you're watching and you can hear me, go ahead and let me know. I haven't done a live stream for a while, so I want to make sure everything's working as it should. We'll give it just a couple minutes and then we'll get started. Wasn't expecting to do a live stream tonight, but just couldn't pass up the opportunity to play a little monitor in Merrimack, even though I uploaded an Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts video earlier today. Chris, thank you. I appreciate that. Good day, mate, in Australia. So uh, I know it's awfully late for uh, our friends in Europe, and I apologize for that, but this will be live on the channel tomorrow, so folks will still be able to see it, just won't be able to interact in real time. But uh, we're going to try to do these more often. I know I keep saying that, but it looks like we've all got a little more time on our hands these days, at least those of us whose jobs have been affected by all of this quarantine stuff. Uh, so first and foremost, I hope everybody's out, everybody out there safe and uh, staying well, staying healthy, be smart. Can I build the USS Massachusetts? We'll do that sometime. Uh, we're going to dive into these Monitor and Merrimack missions, though. I'm excited about this. And I hate calling it the Monitor and the Merrimack because it wasn't the Monitor and the Merrimack. It was the Monitor and the Virginia. We'll talk a little more about the Virginia when we get to that one. But uh, basically, a lot of people refer to it as the, Mo the Merrimack because... It was actually a, a U.S. Navy ship called the Merrimack that had been sunk, and the Confederate Navy raised the hull of the Merrimack and put iron plating around it and renamed it the CSS Virginia. So uh, let's go ahead and, and dive into the, the monitor mission first. And I think we're going to go with firepower because I want to have that extra penetration when we take on this mission because historically these two ships did very little to each other. Uh, so I'm going to actually go new design just because I was playing with this a little bit before we got started. Um, so here's here's the monitor design that you're looking at, and you start out with an uh, initially the the 1,000 tons. We're gonna we're gonna raise this up a little, make it a little bigger here. So we've got a main tower, and that just kind of goes up front here. Thomas, I'm glad to hear you guys have the PPE that you need. My sister is a respiratory therapist uh, at Cleveland Clinic, which is you know one of the top hospitals in the world. And uh, obviously, being a respiratory therapist, she's kind of on the front lines of all this, too. So um, I see you, new nurse, outstanding. Uh, so, Thomas, thank you for what you do, uh, for what you and all of your colleagues are doing for us right now. Um, it's unfortunate that it took something like this for us to give you guys the appreciation that you deserve for all that you guys do for us. So thank you. So, oh, this is cool. I didn't expect to be like 35 people this late at night, at least late here in the uh, Eastern time zone of the U.S. So, um, you know, a lot of people when this game came out said, oh, are they going to have ironclads? And I kept saying, nah, there's no way. You know, this is Age of Dreadnought, so it's starting in 1890, and they're not going to do ironclads, but they must have had enough people ask for it because here they are. Uh, so we're going to go with the, the biggest turret we can. We can go 9-inch gun, 10-inch, 11-inch, or 12-inch. Uh, we're going to go with a 12-inch double. Uh, I, I think the monitor had 10-inch guns, but I could be totally wrong about that. I'm going to look it up right now. Uh, it helps if I spell it right. There we go. I know the basics about the monitor. I just don't know the specific specs. Uh, so 179 feet long, 700 and, oh, so 987 long tons uh, of displacement. So we're a little bigger than that. Um, so the guns, it went 6 knots to 11-inch 
smoothbore dog rims is what it had. So there you have it. Um, there we go. So we've got that. We might want to go a little more central with this if we can, although going this way gives us a little bit more of a, a wide area that we can fire. Uh, we're over on weight, so we're going to have to do something about that. And there's really nothing else to add to it at this point. Um, we're just only a little bit over on weight. There we go. Now we're up to 1479 out of 1500 tons. All right, so there we have it. And of course, being bigger, that means we're going to give the Virginia more of a target to shoot at, but I'm not too worried about that. Seven knots, so we're a tiny bit faster than the real monitor was. Can we move these back a little bit? Because I want to get the weight a little more centered if I can. Looks like we're still looking at an 8.5% four weight offset. I'm, oh, that helps a little bit with it. There we go. Howdy in San Antonio. Hey, James is here. Good to see you, James. Um, yeah, so uh, oh, 4.30 in the morning. Hibiki, that's awesome. I'm glad you're here and joining us, even though it's super early in the morning for you. Uh, Aaron, new halls. Yeah, we've got the monitor and the Merrimack. So um, could I make a super monitor with two turrets? Excellent question. Uh, it appears that you can. Obviously, in this case, I'd be overweight to do that, but I hadn't thought about that. Uh, you know, you can double the, what you're firing with. I'm just wondering if I'm better off to go with the 12-inch guns uh, because of the additional penetration I can get. Uh, I'm looking at the penetration here from 1,000 meters, uh, 5.2 inches. These only get 4 inches of penetration. Uh, so the question is, is it worth it to have the extra? Um, there's a big difference in tonnage between these two. Let me see, like if we do the 10 inch, if we can get two of them on there or we go, yeah, we're still overweight. So we would have to drop on something else to make that happen. So I'm just going to go with a, a more historic monitor. I'm just going to go with 12 inch guns instead of 11s, which is what the monitor had. All right, so we're going to dive into this thing. So the half, they were only using half chargers. I did not know that. Honestly, I don't know nearly as much as I'd like to about this battle. I know it took place, took place in March of 1862. Uh, I know that the Virginia, I think, sank what? The Minnesota uh, was the wooden ship uh, that was sunk. Uh, we didn't even rename it the, the monitor. So we're the Nebraska here. Um, we're just going to go in real time for this one. Uh, and I know they shot it out for like eight hours, and at one point they were almost touching each other, uh, just blasting away and just not doing a whole lot. I'm going to go ahead and drop my speed down a little bit. The monitor versus 1940. <laughs> um, we're going to find out. Wonder guy, we're going to find out about the Merrimack here in a few minutes because when we're done with this monitor mission, we're going to take the... Uh, take the Virginia out for a spin. We're going to do that next. I'm moving my computer so I can see it a little better. See the chat here, guys. This was kind of an unexpected live stream. So let's get a look. It's called Purification in this case, but it does have the Confederate flag there, so you see that. Uh, and it looks like the Virginia. So that's pretty cool. That is, that is really pretty epic. Imagine getting a battle, a custom battle. I wonder if, if, you know, you probably can't do it in the custom battles. It's probably just something you can do in this mission. I, we're going to have to go look in the custom battles and see if that's a possibility. So the monitor, um, Brady Williams is asking, monitor was uh, monitor, monitor in Virginia were the two first ironclad ships in uh, world history. Uh, so the, the monitor was designed by a guy named Erickson who had been hired by the U.S. Navy to build it. I think he built it in, in New York, in the harbor there, uh, while the Virginia was being built in Norfolk. Funny thing is, neither one of these ships survived the year. Uh, Monitor sank in a storm off of Cape Hatteras, Virginia, or North Carolina. They, they just found it. 
Uh, I think they originally found it 20 or 30 years ago, and then they brought up the turret um, within the last decade or so. And actually, uh, two of the, the sailors that were aboard the monitor that were in the turret, uh, I think it's two, uh, are now buried at Arlington National Cemetery. James, thank you, sir. Always appreciate your support. Getting a little bit of glitching going on here. Uh, got a fire going on, but it doesn't look like any significant damage so far. Let's get a look at this turret. So there it is. And it would have, like, there was a canvas that they could put on this thing here to kind of give them shade. Yeah, Lee, that's what I'm thinking. I think I'm going to go get right up alongside him. Because, uh, you know, obviously the uh, the tricky part for the Virginia is that her guns are pretty stationary. Uh, whereas I've got this swivel turret. And you can see that fire damage there. Uh, and I should kind of go right at him because that will change the angle, make it harder for him to hit me. Ooh, of course, you can see how bad the aim is. Ooh, that was a bad hit. Virginia was was scuttled by the Confederate Navy when they lost her home port. And I think they did it in the, was it in the James River? Um, I don't remember which river for sure it was, but it might have been the James. Um, but they scuttled it in the river there. Not long after this, I think it was within a month or two of this battle. And Jesse, yeah, you are correct. Uh, these were not the first ironclad ships. This was the first battle between ironclad ships. Um, I think the French had the very first ironclad ship. Uh, the Gloire, I think it was called, G-L-O-I-R-E. Um, 1857, 1858, something like that. Yeah, well, these ships do turn like whales because they're only going six miles an hour, or six knots. There's a nice hit. We're getting up nice and close now. I'm going to try to turn just a little bit more toward him. Yes, Morgan, they did end up in a draw. Uh, they, they shot it out for a good bit of that day. I think, it was, I want to say it was March 8th, 8th or maybe March 9th of 1862. Uh, it was right at the beginning stages of uh, McClellan's Peninsula Campaign that this all went down. Uh, so Virginia shows up a day, for, like the first day, and you know just kind of wreaks havoc on the US Navy. And then it just happened that the Monitor was already on her way. And so the very next day, Monitor shows up and they have this epic duel. Yeah, hit them low. James, I, uh, I played this out uh, like an hour or so ago. And that's exactly what happened when I was playing with the Monitor. I I got a couple of nice low hits and caused some flooding damage actually pretty early on. I didn't play the whole the whole battle out, but I did play kind of the early part of it. It's cool that you can see all the um, the ricochets happening. You can see all the firing we've done. I've only got two hits so far. I've got a partial penetration and a penetration. I'm gonna to try to stay pointed at him as much as I can. We must be having trouble getting the turret turned around because it hasn't fired yet. Or is it, I wonder, I might not be able to fire over this this thing here. That's probably not, oh, there we go. Now that one deflected, you can see it bounce way off. That was crazy. Tyler, what's up? Glad to have you here. Wow, we got 78 people watching. I didn't think there'd be this many people watching this late at night. Well, it's late for me. It might not be for you guys. The Niza now, uh, Philippine ball. Yeah, uh, we could definitely do that sometime.
go get a look at what purification is doing here. Oh, we did put, look at the hole. Oh, that is cool. I don't remember seeing damage like that on this game before. That is pretty awesome right there. It's actually one of his guns sticking out there, isn't it? Beautiful. Yeah, ping, ping, ping. That's pretty much it, too. I guess I got to get my speed going. I'm only going, why am I only going three knots? Probably because I was turning, and this thing don't turn. What's my next video, Zachary? Uh, let's see. Tomorrow, I'll probably be doing another uh, Age of Sail on the U.S. campaign. I'm going to try to do two videos a day whenever possible, but uh, my wife's working from home right now, so she also has to use the computer. My daughter has a huge YouTube channel. She's about to hit 100,000 subscribers. Um, she uses the computer, uh, so you know we're kind of sharing it three ways right now. My sons also have YouTube channels, but my, my son's got his own computer he got for Christmas. That was like his big gift. Monitor uh, Ananamus. Monitor had 11 inch guns. 11 inch smoothbore Dahlgrens. We looked that up a little while ago. Um, so probably Age of Sail and then another um, Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lord video. I'm having a ton of fun with that game right now. And I know everybody's playing it right now. And there's a lot of YouTubers that do it better than I do. But a lot of fun. All right. We're going to speed this thing up a little bit. Because we've only got 50 minutes left in this mission. And we've got to try and sink this guy if we can. My daughter's YouTube channel. Uh, my daughter's... Uh, it's called Gory Gaming. G-O-R-Y uh, Gaming. 24601. She does uh, mostly Sims and Roblox Royale. And she's hilarious. She's got a perfect personality for a YouTuber. She's way better at it than I am. And, uh, just has a huge following. Michael Upchurch, you got to start somewhere, man. You know, I, I've had this channel for about three and a half years. And this time last year, I had like 4,500 subscribers. And that was after two and a half years. And now, look, I'm, you know, we're probably coming up about a month away from hitting 20,000. Uh, so you just got to stick with it. You got to grind and you got to make videos that only 20, that are only going to get 20 views. Uh, and I did a lot of that before I started getting a little bit of traction. So just stick with it. Bear Killer, what's up? Lots of Ironclads versus a 1930 battleship. I, like, like I was saying, I don't know if that's a possibility yet. We're going to have to go in and look at the custom battles to see if that's something that's even possible. Do I think she's running? I don't know. It sure seems that way, doesn't it? I, I don't know why she wouldn't turn and try to get more of her guns on me. But she's going... Um, how fast is she going? 6.4 6 knots. So, and For some reason, I'm still only going... Not even four. It just seems like whenever I try to turn. Bear Killer, what's your question? Three and a half years of awesomeness. I thank you for that uh, flying pancake. Awesome name, by the way. Yes, I know there were a lot of, of monitors. Uh, in this case, we're just talking about the USS monitor. Um, yeah, I'm sure they had bigger guns as the, the war went on. So they, you know, obviously, I mean, the monitor was first, but they were building a bunch of these things because um, even, what, within a couple of weeks of the battle with the monitor and the Merrimack, uh, they had a bunch of these things down at, uh, with the Battle of Shiloh. They had gunboats down there and they were getting um, monitors in the rivers and they were a big part of the war on the Western theater. Hey, there's a nice hit. Now we're getting a little flooding, but it looks like it's too far up. Well, now we got three, three compartments flooded. That's decent. I'm not entirely sure why I keep turning when I'm trying to go straight. Scotty, I appreciate that. Oh, we got 94 people watching now. This is awesome. Planet base. 
Uh, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure that that fits too much with my my channel. I mean, I know I do some city builders, but I try to keep them more historical. Yeah, that's a good question um, about my funnel being damaged. I'm looking here. Uh, the ship's on fire. It doesn't appear. It's not showing any damage to my funnel. We're getting close to her now. Ten ironclads. Yeah, Casey, what I'm going to do is as soon as we're done with this battle, I'm going to go into the custom battles and see if monitors are a possible possibility on this at all. Or it might just be that they're only available in the Naval Academy missions. Howdy from Dayton. Hey, you're just a couple hours away from me down in the other corner of the state. I'm over near Youngstown. Hey, yeah, see, we get up close. Now we're getting some nice damage. Of course, the same could be said for him. Toledo, hey. You know, I'm sure being from Toledo, you know the joke. Uh, and Alex, yes, uh, the monitor was first made during the Civil War. It was 1862. It was uh, the first full year of the war. Um, all right, now they're trying to go this way. Um, did I, I haven't done any Panzer General II, no. Um, anyway, back to Toledo. Uh, the joke is, yeah, we're up to 104 now. The joke is, uh, you know, because Toledo is built on a swamp. Go across that T. Um, Toledo is built on a swamp right on the border of Michigan and Ohio, and there was like this little kind of mini war that was fought between Ohio and Michigan over Toledo. And the joke is that Michigan won because Ohio got Toledo. I've only been to Toledo a couple of times, about three hours away from me. From Meridian, Mississippi. Awesome. Empire Total War. I do have the AC3, uh, ACW3 mod. Yeah, I know about the manual rudder. I just keep forgetting about it. Like when I was doing, when I was trying to do the ramming mission earlier, I had forgotten that I could do the manual rudder. future guy gaming <laughs> army chow main what is up welcome back good to see you again because michigan is better we we will not speak of that dylan was erickson the guy that built that cannon that killed john tyler's cabinet i didn't realize that was the same guy but i i, I remember that incident um because i think didn't it kill his father-in-law um, hey, Pittsburgh, Chris Coley. I spent a lot of time in Pittsburgh. I've spoken in like 50 schools in the Pittsburgh area. And I fly out of the Pittsburgh airport when I travel. Anthony, Denver, one of my favorite cities. I'm there a couple times a year. That's where my home base is for the organization I work for. I work for the family of one of the Columbine victims. Oh, man. So this is going to take a while. We're even on double speed, too. See how slow this thing gets when it turns. It gets all the way down to like one knot. The home of Klinger. Yeah, that's right. So, Chris Cully, where uh, where you live in the Pittsburgh area? Hey, that was a nice hit. Let's get a look. Oh, we got a nice nice hit on the front. Now we've got that big hole that we we put in the rear. Yeah, see, his guns don't have a big, wide array of... Oh, look at that. She's flooding. She's flooding big time. I think she's going to recover, though, because we, we still have three compartments on the bottom that didn't flood. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Go under, darn you. There's another hit. Let me slow this down. If I could go back in time right before the Civil War started, what would I take with me? Oh my gosh, that's a really interesting question. A history book. And give a, give a, two of them actually. I'd give a copy to Jefferson Davis and one to Lincoln and tell them what they were in, in for because nobody thought it was going to be like that. I shouldn't say nobody. Like people like Sherman knew it was going to be brutal. Jay! 
Butler, awesome. I've spent a lot of time in Butler. I spoke at South Butler High School. I spoke at Butler. I spoke at um, Riverside in Butler County. Uh, Mars, spoke at Mars schools twice, actually. You just checked, Ernest. Uh, thanks for checking that out. I was going to check that after we were done. Down in Oakland, oh yeah. Oh, he got a hold of the, he got on top of the flooding, darn it. Still, we're doing pretty good. AK-47 and a million rounds. Isn't there a book about that? Um, Guns of the South, is that the uh, Harry Turtle Dove's book that has something to do with the South getting AK-47s? Uh, Brian Johnson, no. They just came out with an update today. It was a... a, a hot fix to the uh, Alpha 5. Uh, actually, it was somebody uh, who commented on my video from earlier today that gave me the heads up that they had updated it because I made the video this morning, um, the meme ship video that I did this morning, and the update came out after that, so I wasn't even aware of the update. He's gonna have a hard time hitting me now. Ah. A dedicated video for the USS Nevada. That's an outstanding ship. I need to get back to doing some videos um, trying to build some of those uh, historic warships. I definitely wanna do, wanna do the USS Atlanta at some point in honor of my cousin. I did one before, but I think now we've got the options to be able to build it a lot better. I really hope they'll come out with the uh, the quad turrets so we can do some of those ships. A max speed torpedo boat. You gotta go early in time to get the torpedo boats. Yeah, Chris, um, I'm, I'm actually um, listening. Of course, I didn't get, I haven't gotten to listen to it a lot. Um, Brady, I should still be here in 10. Um, before all this happened with the coronavirus, I still had a bunch of traveling. I was going to be doing a lot of driving, um, like four and a half hours each way. And uh, so I listened to a lot of audio books and um, I got one of Harry Turtledove's books. I got, um, it's not Guns of the South. It's another alternate history of the Civil War. Um, it's one where uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the book, but I've gotten through it. And he's a fantastic writer. He really kind of gets you in, in the place. Um, but it starts with the Confederates winning the war because uh, Robert E. Lee's orders uh, that were wrapped around the cigars during the Antietam campaign are never found. Uh, Atlanta was a heavy cruiser, Morgan. There were two of them during World War II. Um, there was one that was an Atlanta class, one that was a Cleveland class. Um, I had a cousin who was on the, the first one, the one that was sunk uh, at the Battle of Guadalcanal in 1942. Oh, yeah, yeah, light cruiser. You're right. Light cruiser. All right, we've got to stay nice and close to this guy. Oh, man, did that thing bounce like crazy. Ram him. <laughs> I mean, they did get pretty close during the actual battle between these two. They got closer than this. I don't know about Lee's orders. I, I just know that McClellan was the absolute worst guy you would want to have in command when you get an advantage like that because, dude, uh, oh my gosh, the way the dude sat outside the peninsula, or on the peninsula, surrounding Richmond with, with the city in his hands. All he had to do was take it. And he kept wiring back, saying that he needed more men, that he was outnumbered significantly. And oh my gosh, it was just brutal. If Grant had been in command of the Army of the Potomac in 1862 outside the peninsula, or on the peninsula campaign, the Union would have taken Richmond right then and there, no doubt.
By the way, Ben, I mentioned this a while back. I've been listening to Ron Chernow's biography of Ulysses S. Grant, and I'm so glad to see that the History Channel's doing a series on that, kind of like their Washington series they just did, because Grant was such an incredible story. Uh, Thara, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, yes, this is a brand new update. It came out today. They've got, um, the, these are just uh, Naval Academy missions. One where you can build a monitor, the other one where you can build the Virginia or the Mer Merrimack as it was sometimes known. Oh gosh, Rick, you're right. I mean, the noise and the smoke on these ships must have just been intense. We're coming darn close to hitting this guy. Yeah, I know it's trying to avoid a ram. That's why I'm manually using the rudder here. All this fire. Jeez. Yeah, we're at a bad angle. We're going to just probably ricochet everything right now. What's his damage looking like? Civil War idiocy. Burnside needs a mention. Oh, gosh, yes. But here's the thing about Burnside, and I've said this. I do, Colin, I do have a Twitch account. I just I haven't used it, and I need to get it set up. I, I used to, when I would do live stream, I would simultaneously stream on um, Twitch and YouTube at the same time, and the chat would kind of merge. But, um, yeah, uh, Burnside was not fit to command an army, and I think I've said this before, but nobody knew that better than Ambrose Burnside. Yeah, you're gonna have to, we're gonna have to get darn close. Minimum tonnage, maximum speed torpedo boat. Yeah, Jesse, you're right um, about McClellan being fooled. Um, I'm trying to remember, was it Magruder? I'm trying to remember the general that was at Yorktown um, that fooled McClellan with like 8,000 men. Well, Zachary, uh, Minnesota might not have a lot of history of its own, but Minnesota's got incredible history in the Civil War. The 1st Minnesota Regiment was just an incredible story. Uh, so you've definitely got some good things going for you there. Yeah, I'm at a bad angle and he's going to bounce his too, but that means I'm not going to be any closer to sinking this guy. Iowa veteran. Very cool. April 19th, 1989. That's right. I forgot about that. I remember when that happened. Were you on board at the time, or were you, did you serve at a different time? By the way, thank you for your service. Yeah, Burnside was honest about his qualification to command, and I think Hooker also felt the same way about himself. Um, but took it, and I, well, I shouldn't say that. Hooker was kind of a brash guy, but nobody thought he was more suited to an army command than Pope. Pope was ridiculously confident in himself and then got his head handed to him uh, in the second bull run. Oh yeah, we're, we're pretty much hitting her now. It was Magruder, I thought so, Jesse. I couldn't remember for sure. Yes, American Battlefield Trust is fantastic uh, for information and, and videos on YouTube about the wars that are in a concise, really easy to follow way. You were on board that day. Wow. That's what's well, a part of history, but obviously in your mind, it's much more personal than that. Uh, I can't imagine how hard that must have been that day to be in the Iowa. Flee, flee, Karen says. Uh, what ship hall was the Virginia built on? Colin, the Virginia was built on the Merrimack Hall, which is why a lot of people call this battle the Monitor and the Merrimack, even though it was really the Monitor and Virginia. Looks like we're both kind of sitting still at this point. Oh, uh, Andrew, you're right, um, hey, Sweet Tooth, about McClellan as a trainer. It's kind of like if any of you guys have followed um, Band of Brothers. Hey, Bully, thanks for being here, man. Uh, we've got 132 people watching now. This is awesome. Um, oh, there's a big hit. Um, if you've ever seen Band of Brothers, you know um, they had a commanding officer who was just kind of a, a jerk and was terrible in the field. 
but created them into the incredible elite unit that they were with the training. I think of him and McClellan kind of in the same way. Um, they both were great at preparing a fighting force, but terrible at leading it in the field. What was, I don't think the Merrimack was a frigate, but I can't really speak to that for sure. Oh, I think we're at a bad angle right now. But I kind of don't want to, I don't want to get up next to him and give him a chance to start kind of broadsiding me either. Well, Thomas, I know uh, Sobel, Sobel's family may say that, but I think pretty much to a man in that company, they've all pretty much agreed. So I, I have a feeling that's just them wanting to protect their legacy of their father, grandfather, etc. But it was a frigate? Okay, thanks, American Patriot. Ross as a drill sergeant. Yep, that's pretty much it. So we're actually going to probably run out of time before this mission's done, but that's okay because I want to get a chance to uh, take the Virginia out into the field as well. Benjamin from Brisbane, Australia. Nice to see you. Bragg was a Confederate version of McClellan. That's probably an apt observation. A good look at the front of the Merrimack. Yeah, we can do that. Actually, what I'll do is I'll back up a little bit here. Bear Killer, 13-year-old Confederate drummer boy. That's cool. One of my ancestors was one of the um, oldest people in the Civil War. I, I don't want to say one of the oldest. He was certainly one of the oldest in his regiment. Uh, he was my fifth great-grandfather, and he was born in 1809 and enlisted in the 20th Ohio in 1861. He was 52 years old. He said he was 44 on his enlistment because I think 45 was the max age you could be and still enlist. Enlisted with his 16-year-old son, who was the drummer in their regiment, or in their company, uh, Company H. And he served, uh, Sam Hughes did, this 52-year-old man, uh, all the way through Shiloh, um, Vicksburg. In fact, he was in Logan's division, which was the very first Union division to go into the city of Vicksburg after it surrendered. Uh, and he was with with Grant's army and then Sherman's army all the way uh, to Atlanta. And then he actually mustered out in the fall of 1864, right before the march to the sea, he went home. McClellan was young, but there were a lot of guys that were young. Um, you know, Grant was young. Grant was in his late 30s when the war started. Um, a lot of those guys were young. Jackson was in his 30s, Stonewall Jackson. Um, you know, more often than not, they were that age because that was the age of the men who had fought in um, Mexico. And uh, well, you, if, you, if you've never learned Ulysses S. Grant's story, you got to. And, and I know History Channel's coming out with this documentary that'll help with that but oh my gosh I, the fact that Hollywood has not made a movie about the man is a crime because the man's story is made for Hollywood some of the stuff that he did and some of the, like the stuff in Mexico is just like you wouldn't even believe it was true and he just was a he was a he was a good guy I, you know whatever you, your your uh, thoughts on the war and on him as a general Grant was a solid dude. He really was. He was a nice guy. He was high quality. He just, his biggest flaw, number one, obviously, was his drinking. Uh, but he wasn't nearly the alcoholic a lot of people uh, claim him to be. Uh, but the other thing was he, he too easily trusted people when it came to get-rich-quick schemes. And it was, it was motivated by the right thing. He was, he was trying to um, get his family set up to where he didn't always have to be away from them. Um, but uh, he, he kept falling for schemes that you know, kind of ripped him off. And 
Um, so yeah, shouldn't I keep the bow toward the Virginia? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm better off to do that because it minimizes what he's able to do, but there you have it. That's the end of that. So, um, all right, no, we're not going to retry because we're going to take on the other side of things now. So here we have first casemates, CSS, Virginia, um, firepower, speed, armor. What do you guys think we should do here? Uh, I'm not sure how funds would really help me. Um, speed might be good. I'm thinking maybe the turning rate might be good because of the minimum, the, the problems we have with this gun. George Green. Yeah, he was an old man. That's for sure. Yeah, Ernest, I know McClellan was from Ohio, but so was Grant. So was Sherman. Um, you know, I mean, so we had the good ones too. Um, James McPherson, who was one of the best Union generals in the Civil War, uh, was killed in Atlanta. He was from uh, Ohio. Actually, Grant's grandmother, Rachel Kelly Grant, is buried about eight miles from me uh, in Deerfield, Ohio. Um, Grant's father, uh, right before Grant was born, they, their family lived here in Northeast Ohio, just you know, eight, ten miles away from me. And then they had moved down near closer to Cincinnati right before Grant was born. Uh, firepower. It's hard penetrating as it is. Yeah, I think you're probably right about that. That's what I did with the with the monitor as well. And I don't know what's with the Spanish names on this thing, but um, we're going to fix that. So you can see the huge difference in displacement on this ship compared to the monitor. Uh, much, much bigger. And we're going to make this thing as big as we possibly can. The Garibaldi situation. Giuseppe Garibaldi, no, I didn't. Make a glass cannon. Make the quickest ship known to man. 50 knots, not real. Um, I don't know how fast we can get with this, but if we can get this thing up to 10 knots and get some real maneuverability, that might actually work out pretty nicely. Um, all right, let's take a look at our towers. We'll balance them on the edges there. All right, 10 inch guns is the best we can do. How do we go about this? So can we not put 10s? What do we what do we do? Oh, oh, these are casemate guns, that's why. All right. All right, we're overweight now. More bulkheads, yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. But we definitely are gonna have to slow gonna have to slow this thing back down. Come back to reality. We're all we're still almost overweight now. Torpedo launchers? Oh, that would have been fantastic, but no, we can't do that. We still need a funnel. I probably only need one. It's gonna look weird, but. Oh, no, we're going to need two. Why is our weight so badly offset? Look at the, the range in the area that those things can fire. It's not real great. Yeah, we could remove those if we have to, but I kind of like having them. A ship of the line and age of sail. Yeah, pretty pretty much. And we can't do anything. I didn't think we'd be able to do anything with these engines. But just go down to five knots. Yeah, you know, I might as well. You're probably right. Although, I've got the extra cost available to me here. I'm at 100% engine efficiency now, though. Panzer Core 2, yeah, at some point. I just got, I have so many games going on that I'm playing right now. I hate to add anything else. Do I still have two gun slots open? Oh, you're talking about, I think those are main gun slots, aren't they? Oh, right here. I see what you're saying. 
That's a lot of guns. All right, we're overweight again. Speed it is. We'll sacrifice some more speed. There we go. Oh, we got a 24% four weight offset. Yeah, they offer you barbettes. Well, what the heck would you do with that? I don't know. It's just probably built into the game somehow. No guns in the corners. Yeah, I know. Um, but you know what? I hate the four weight offset, but I still I like I like the guns. I like the bazillion guns that I have right now. Let's do it. Yes, I'm wasting a, a lot of tonnage on speed, which is why I dropped all the speed off. Oh, see, this is why it shows it as the Spanish Empire because there's no Confederate uh, nation in here, even though they give me the Confederate flag. What is this other ship over here? We got to take on two monitors? Oh, hey now, this is not fair. So we want to try and uh, we want to try and turn on this guy. One hundred forty-two people watching. That's awesome. The USS Midway. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to maneuver to to get turned this way, so I guess we'll go this way. Ooh, there we go. That didn't do much, but it was a hit. Imagine a game like this, but just in the American Civil War. Well, that's what this is. We'll turn the speed up just a little bit. while I try to get broadside on this guy. Look how slow I turn. Ooh, nice hit. Yeah, he's gonna deflect a lot on me here. We seem to be getting better hits than I did as the monitor, even though I have actually a lower caliber gun. I don't know why there's two. Why is every ship in this game crewed by people with uh, no depth perception? Karen, I saw your thing about the Midway. You don't have to keep saying it. Appreciate that. Try to shoehorn two 20-pounder parrots on the front. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's get these guns going on this guy now. There we go. Now we're getting some some fire. That's probably why it has me fighting too. I'm going to try to keep my rudder turning because we're going to probably need to, to to keep up with him. Ooh. I'm sorry, it didn't hurt me too much. Victoria Total War. That would be something. Colorado, not even a state yet. Yeah, good call. Not even a glint in its mother's eye yet. Uh, Jesse, I thought I remember reading somewhere about Virginia having a Napoleon. Um, I could be totally wrong about that, but I, that sounds familiar to me. It's funny, though, because, you know, for all the people who said something about wanting ironclads, I was sure it would never happen. But uh, this is one of those examples where the developers obviously listened because they made this happen. Um, I'm just not sure why they haven't listened on the whole four uh, quad turrets yet, but... How's a metal ship on fire exactly? Uh, well, it wasn't all metal. I mean, there was wood, like you can see up here on top. There's wood, and of course the, the lifeboats.
Are we going to be able to fire on both these guys at the same time? That's my question. Spar torpedoes. Yeah, I was hoping maybe when it, when I saw torpedo tubes available. Um, no, <laughs> Andrew, is this an April Fool's joke? Maybe. Uh, it doesn't seem to be, but uh, it definitely was unexpected. Yeah, a Civil War Total War game would be outstanding. Imperial Europe, yeah, Grand Tactician looks fantastic. I am really excited about that game. I should probably do an update and kind of cover that for folks on the channel, but you guys definitely got to check that one out. They've got some gameplay videos and some campaign videos up now uh, on their channel. It it looks, if that game's functional at all, it's going to be phenomenal, and I'm excited about that one. Yeah, Karen, yeah. Uh, we'll go till this battle's up, and that'll probably be the end of this stream. I just wanted to be able to get the uh, monitor and the Merrimack going. Lifeboats, yes, that was a thing back in the 1860s. Well, what if they started to sink? That's what happened to the monitor. The monitor sank in a storm in December of 1862 off Cape Hatteras, and they rescued quite a bit of the crew because um, there were other ships that were alongside the monitor. The monitor wasn't really designed to be out in the open ocean like that. Robert, thank you. I appreciate that. There is no channel without you guys, so uh, I am, I'm grateful for every one of you, and it's been cool. A lot of you have been around for a while, or you comment often, so I feel like I've gotten to know you a little bit. And if you're new, welcome, and I'm glad you're here as well. Yeah, Ernest, the, the Hunley did sink. Uh, <laughs> Rule the Waves 2, uh, Colin, I actually have, but here's what happened. Rule the Waves 2, um, if you are if you don't know me uh, very well or you're new to the channel, um, I travel a lot, especially in the fall. Uh, I travel all over the country. I've been in 47 states in the last six years speaking in schools, and my laptop uh, is pretty low-end technology. Uh, so Rule the Waves kind of became the game that I would play on my laptop and record videos from hotel rooms while I was traveling. Uh, well, now I'm home, so I've been so consumed with all these other games that I play on my desktop from home that I haven't gotten back to Rule the Waves 2, but I really need to. Uh, I'm pretty new to it. I'm not very skilled on it yet, but I have, I think, maybe four or five episodes of uh, a German campaign on there. American Patriot, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Chris, you're absolutely right. Got to do more live streams. For me, there's nothing better than this. I, I just have to get better at managing my time and managing all of my family obligations to set aside time uh, to do these live streams. But you're absolutely right. I love doing them. They're so much fun. And um, used to be I'd do a live stream. And uh, Andrew, thank you <laughs> so much. Um, I used to do these more often, and when I did, I'd have, you know, 20 or 30 people, and I thought that was great, and I loved it. But now, you know, I do one of these, there's like 140 of you, and it's awesome. I think we're going to win this one. California is not looking real good right now. Colorado, same thing. Interesting, California's got more flooding damage. Colorado's got more of the uh, structural damage. I think we might have California just about dead in the water. Colin, I appreciate that. That um, There goes California. Um, Ultimate General and Ultimate Admiral have certainly been by far the two um, biggest games on my channel, and that's where I've seen most of my growth. That's why I've got like 100 Ultimate Admiral videos, because Ultimate Admiral, anytime I make a video, it gets like 10 times more views than anything else that I do. So that's why you see them so often, because they're just really popular. American Gun Club, I am not going to quit. I know it's getting traction, and uh, this is what I've been working toward. I told my wife when I started doing this 
Um, I told her, I said, listen, I think it's going to take three years to get this channel to really start doing something. And that's where we're at. We're three and a half years in um, with a rebrand about a year ago because somebody else created a channel with the same name about a month after I created mine and his is way bigger than mine. So then I had all these people thinking I stole his name and I didn't. Um, Clayton, do I think there'll be subs in the game? No, I don't. But then again, I didn't think that we'd have the monitor there in Merrimack. So what do I know? Oh, that was ugly. All right, we're gonna have to go get close to this guy if we can. It's gonna take a little while to do that. A 20,000 subs special. I saw somebody say something about that. That'd be a great idea. We'll definitely do something like that. We're getting close to 19,000, which means we're gonna be doing another giveaway for this game. I've still got four more keys to give away. It was provided to me by the, uh, by the developers. Um, the first one, when I did the first giveaway, uh, I don't know, it was end of December, beginning of January. I bought that copy of the game. I paid for that one. Uh, it was after that the developers reached out to me and said, hey, you know, I want to give you some keys so you can use them for your future giveaway. So they gave me five of them, and those are the ones that we're giving away now. We've given away one so far. We've got four more to go. We're going to give each one of those at every 1,000. So we'll hit 19,000 probably here in the next couple of days. If you haven't subbed already, make sure you do. It'll get us there faster. Chris, The Historical Gamer is another uh, channel. Uh, American Gubble, my wife has the patience of a saint. You're right. Um, uh, Historical Gamer is another uh, channel similar to mine. Uh, he's been around a lot longer than I have. In fact, he was one of the first channels that I discovered when I was doing a little research into wanting to create a channel of my own. Um, so then I created mine in December of 2016. Um, called it the history guy and about a month later um, another person created a channel called the history guy uh, his is called history deserves to be remembered well his he's you know he's got a bow tie and he, he just kind of talks about historical topic topics he's great at what he does it's a great channel I recommend to check it out um, but what happened was since he's got a couple hundred thousand subscribers or more now um, a lot of people thought that I was trying to rip off his name and uh, I wasn't. Andrew, uh, thanks for being here, man. Take care. Um, Chris, YouTube doesn't make you change your names because there's literally millions of channels on YouTube and there are at least eight called The History Guy, most of which are not only older than mine, but they're older than his too. Um, so yeah, so his, his is about a month newer than mine. I think he started his at the end of January of 2017. Because his grew so much more, everybody assumed that I was trying to rip off his name. It wasn't the case. Wanted to clear up the confusion, so that's why I changed it to History Guy Gaming. Uh, even though I don't just do gaming. Thomas, thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Battle of the Secondaries. Massachusetts versus Turpits. Ultimate Legendary Mode, Ultimate General. Union Legendary Mode. I've done Union General, uh, Union Legendary Mode. I did a whole campaign on that. Uh, so that should still be on the channel. You can check that out. I did both Confederate and Union Legendary Modes. Yamato, I'm sorry, I didn't see your cha uh, question. Go ahead and throw it up again. There's a lot of people in the chat, so um, I'm keeping one eye on the chat and one eye on the, on the game, and so I'm not seeing everything. Yeah, the History Guy's almost 700,000 subscribers now, yeah. Uh, and, and I'm not knocking him at all. He's got a great channel, and I, I wish him all the success in the world. And like I said, I encourage you guys to check it out. He's got some great stuff on his channel. He's just not me. You know, we're just different. We're doing different things. Um, and I'm not trying to impersonate him. I'm not trying to be him at all. And there's lots of videos on my channel that have my face on it, so you can see I'm not the same guy. Yeah, there's lots of fires going on on both sides here. Man, we just can't quite finish off the Colorado. We've still got 38 minutes in the game time, so I think we'll be fine. I'm going to try to get up a little closer to him here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Ooh, that one hurt. 
that's <laughs> like a it's like a machine gun when I'm on triple speed. Karen, a face cam. I mean, I, I've done some face cam stuff. I don't do it often. I have a we, uh, uh, 1080p, uh, kind of a high 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 res webcam. I just don't use it very often. But yeah, um, I want to do more like history chats too. We just kind of talk about historical subjects. And Oh man, I'm getting a lot of flooding damage now, but hopefully we should be able to get on top of that. Ooh, that one hurt. What modules are still alive on Colorado? Okay, let's take a look. So, engine two's damaged, engine three's damaged, the ship's on fire. Uh, one of their funnels is out. It looks like they're turrets, actually, and one of the few things on the ship that's still working. Yeah, I think this one's just about over. I think we're going to knock the Colorado out here. We're nice and close. We've got the full broadside going. Might win by fire. Yeah, you're right. I think this this could be a structural victory here. We're at two percent. That fire spreads a little bit. One percent. I think we're gonna get it that way. You're right. Yep. He's done. He's done. There it is. Beautiful. Burn. Lots of burn. All right, guys. I promise we're gonna we're gonna do some more live streams. Um, I don't know what we'll live stream. Probably do some different things, but got to do more. This is just way too much fun. We got 150 people in the in the room. Um, I'm going to try to do this more and I'll try to do it at different times so we can get different folks um, available because I know a lot of our friends in Europe can't watch right now, but it's good for you folks over in Australia and New Zealand and on the West Coast and Central US. So thanks for being a part of this, guys. I had a lot of fun. I'm going to go to bed, I think. So <laughs> just so I can get up in the morning and hang out with my kids because they're all home from school for at least the next month. So be safe. Be smart with all this coronavirus stuff. Take care of yourself, guys, and we will see you again soon. Thanks for watching.